Hey everybody, Jim here with SAPBODS.com and today I'm bringing you a course called Learn BODS in a Day. This is going to be a one day long course designed for people who have already been in the data migration industry for a long time and are already programmers. This really isn't a class to teach people who are not programmers how to do data migration using BODS. So with that said, let's get started. Oh, yes, there you go again. So the first thing we're going to try to do is connect to BODS with the designer. Let's try that first. All right, so here is my BODS sandbox. Yeah, thanks. And your data services designer, it looks just like this icon here. Let's go. It's going to think about it a little bit and then I'm just going to log in. Great. So the first time you see BODS, it's going to be a little bit overwhelming. You're going to see a lot of stuff on the screen all at once. There's a lot of icons down here. And you know what? While I'm working on this, let me uh, let me make the mouse more visible. Hold on a second. I'll be right back. As I was saying before, you'll notice a lot of overwhelming content at the top, through the middle, and then here at the bottom, a lot of stuff going on. And then you have this start page. You notice that this is a, a work area over here on the right, and then here you have some repositories to look at. Uh, but the start page, it's a, a, a great launch point to get to different things in BODS. And if you ever lose that, don't worry, you can get it right back with the show start page. So what we're going to do, it's going to create a new project. And this is very much akin to making a Microsoft database, an access database, in the old days when you were uh, transforming data and uh, doing the whole ETL routine from legacy systems into SAP or anything else. And uh, you would make a database for each project. You would certainly recycle a lot of code from old projects, but uh, this is how you, this is very much akin to making a Microsoft database. And I'll show you why later. Uh, let's call this PRJ BODS training, just like that. So right at the beginning, I want to get into naming conventions. Notice here that I put PRJ at the front. Now, a lot of people will say it's not necessary, and I, I like to do it because I'm an old school programmer from way back in the days, and uh, back in the early 80s. And I like to uh, make sure that everything is properly labeled so I can look right at it and tell what it is. Fortunately, with this BODS product, you have an icon that additionally shows you what's uh, going on. Uh, let's see, what was the other thing I wanted to do? Add some data stores. Let's do that. Creating a data store is actually very easy. If you go down to this data stores tab into this repository of data stores and right click to choose new, you can create a new data store quite easily. Of the types, there are database, which of course you would expect a data store realistically is just a source and or target of database tables uh, to extract and then potentially load. In our case, uh, in this first case, we're going to go with a database, but first I have to create the database. Let's go to SQL Server. It's fun to have your own SQL Server. And I'm going to create a new login. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to talk to you about this uh, first instance of noob and pro moves. So a noob move is something that somebody who isn't uh, in the business a long time is going to do, but a pro is going to do something that's uh, particularly clever, I think. 
So let me let me get into this. I'll show you the first pro move. I'm just going to call this BODS training. We'll go SQL Server authentication. And the first pro move is to untick this box. And what this does is it prevents the SQL Server from demanding the user to change the credentials, change the password the first time it tries to connect to the SQL Server. And if you're using BODS, it doesn't provide you that opportunity to change the password. So I'm just going to untick that, hit OK. And I'm going to create a new database called BODS training. And the owner will be BODS training. And the defaults through here are all going to be fine. Just don't worry about those. This will most likely be done for you. Uh, so you, you may not even have to know how to do this. So now that that database is created, it's going to be uh, just fine. So I'm going to close the Management Studio, go back to BODS, right click here in the repository of data stores, hit new, and I'm going to give it a meaningful name for BODS training. And that is a database of type Microsoft SQL Server. And we're going to go with the latest version available. Uh, BODS training. And if you go into the advanced, all the defaults are going to be just fine. Just leave those alone. And just like that, we've added a data store to BODS. Before we move on from adding data stores into BODS, I've got a couple of bonuses for you old school programmers, and that should be pretty much everyone who's watching this. Uh, back in the day, there was a time when all transformations occurred in Microsoft Access. And I wrote a lot of code uh, for the purpose of transforming data in Microsoft Access. Let's see, here it is. And I encapsulated it all into a Microsoft Access database. So I'm going to save this database onto my BODS sandbox in the database files folder. Just like that. And I'm going to go back to the sandbox. But before we access this, I'm going to set up an ODBC connector. And with that ODBC connector, we can access the Microsoft Access database. Now, a lot of you have been programming for a long time and have done this step a thousand times, but all I'm doing is telling the computer where to find the source of an open database connector. So we're going to call this one MoDB VBA Toolbox. I'm going to select the database, which should be right there. And all the defaults, all these defaults are fine. And there's our ODBC connector created quite nicely. So now we go back into BODS, hit new. We're going to call this data store Jimbo MDB. It is a database of type ODBC. And uh, BODS is actually kind enough to pull up a list of system ODBC connectors in a drop down menu like this for us. No need for a username or password. The defaults are all going to be just fine. Leave it alone. And just like that, we've created another data store. So th there's nothing magical or mysterious about creating data stores. They're just databases that are going to be the source and the target for data that's coming in and out of BODS. So I've got one more for you. Let me get that prepared. Like any freelance consultant, my continuing education falls upon my own shoulders and 
one of the things I did to keep up to speed is build my own SAP sandbox. Uh, I went the route of Minisap, which comes as uh, a CD or a series of CDs with a book on SAP data objects. Uh, you can pick up Minisap here and there. Uh, this one I managed to keep alive for about six years, despite the fact that it's designed to self-destruct after about 30 days. Uh, if you want to know how to do that, there's an article on the website that shows how, but I don't condone that or encourage anyone to do that because it likely violates some sort of SAP licensing agreement. Uh, it's a pretty neat system. Uh, it comes with a lot of keen features, but it is lacking in that it doesn't have all of the features that you would typically get with a complete SAP implementation. You get LS and W. You can uh, poke around with, oops. Yes. You can poke around with Web Time Pro stuff and just do a little bit of experimentation without jeopardizing your client's system. It's just a, a fun sandbox. You back it up before you start toying with it and it becomes a, a, a fun toy for keeping up to date with SAP. Well, I'm going to make that Minisap SAP server a data store. And the way to do that is just this, the same as with Microsoft Access or with Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, we're going to call this DS Minisap. And this is going to be a SAP Applications Server. And I've been running this off of a beat up P4 laptop for a long time. I just couldn't bring myself to, th to throw the silly thing away. So it's it's still around and it's great because I get to use it for this video. Let's call this, uh, oh, oh. Uh, before we move on, let me circle back to the noob and pro moves. Uh, SAP has this thing when you try to reach into it from outside using data services where it will throw an error, an authentication error, if you don't use uppercase letters when you spell out the username. Even though I, I know the password is right, even though you don't need to capitalize the name when you log into SAP, it'll still throw this error. Let me show you. Okay. Oh, hold on. That is zero, zero, zero. Okay, so this name or password is incorrect. Now, I, I know the name and password are correct, but because I didn't capitalize this, it's throwing that error. So the pro move, here's a pro tip for you. When you create a data store into SAP, capitalize the username and be sure to put the correct client number. And just like that, Minisap and all the tables therein are added as a data store to SAP's BODS. So uh, in recap, I installed, or that is I created three data stores that reach out and connect to three different databases, one as a Microsoft SQL Server database, one as an Access database connected through ODBC, and then a third as an SAP system. So there's nothing mystical or magical. It's it's all very straightforward. Uh, once you've used this a few times, you'll, you'll get up to speed and you'll feel very confident. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how to tease information out of these databases, out of these data stores, and then process them in SQL queries in order to do something productive, like transforming data for the purpose of implementing SAP. Thanks so much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.